So yesterday on this Facebook page, I posted a case that I just happened to be reading out that morning and it looked kind of interesting. Uh, it was a presenting cord or a Funic presentation and I thought it would just be kind of a nice show and tell, but it, it launched into this discussion about what's the difference between a Vesa Previa and a Funic presentation. So I thought I would create a little video, I'll, not only just to, to demonstrate that point, but also this is, we're developing a website right now and it's gonna be this kind of a thing, little video presentations, hopefully short and quick for the most part, as well as a bunch of full length lectures. But uh, um, this would kind of give a chance to uh, demonstrate that. And so let's just go over a quick v Vesa Previa versus Phoenix presentation. So um, these were the two cases I presented. So this is a Vesa Previa, this is a Phoenix chord. I'm sorry, not a Phoenix chord, a Phoenix presentation. Phoenix is Latin for chord. Um, so in this video of a presenting chord, you see the cervix. There was actually a cerclage in place that was <clears throat> not appropriately positioned. That was kind of the point of this cine clip. But in noticing that, there was the baby here, and there's a cord. This umbilical cord is in between the baby and the cervix. So what is that? That is a presenting cord. The cord is the presenting structure. So theoretically, if the cord stayed there right during delivery, the cord could prolapse into the cervix and get basically compressed as the baby is being delivered. And in this cine clip, which is not as good because uh, the, the woman had an open cervix and this is a, uh, a translabial image, but what you can see is that there's actually a foot coming down in here and the cord is presenting. So in this case, actually there you could end up having a problem as the, if the baby was being delivered with the cord like that. Theoretically, most of the time these presenting cords do not generate a problem because they often just get out of the way by the end. Now this is in contrast to the Vesa Previa. So the Vesa Previa has actual um, vessels from the cervical, mem I'm sorry, from the placental membrane that are covering the cervical stroma here. So you can actually see in grayscale that there is something going on and you put color on it and there's flow. Well, is this a maternal vein, a maternal artery? What's the big deal? Um, so you can actually put a, a spectral tracing on it here and you can see that the heartbeat in this vessel is 131 beats per minute. So that's, unless the mom is really tachycardic, this is a fetal blood vessel. So what's the point? The importance is that if this is a maternal vessel and the and there's some bleeding from it and there's a hundred cc's of blood loss or something, uh, the mother losing a hundred cc's of blood is no big deal. In a fetal vessel, as this baby is delivered, if that ruptures now and you deal with a hundred and you get a hundred cc's of blood loss, now you're dealing with a huge portion, you know, up to a third of the baby's blood volume. They can literally bleed to death. So that's a significant issue. So um, in order to understand how this happens, I'm going to actually do some drawing. Okay, so I've switched over to this whiteboard program, and pardon my uh, lack of artistic uh, abilities, but basically if you look at the placenta from sort of, from looking from the top, it's kind of like a pancake, and you've got the umbilical cord, we'll do a nice central cord insertion, and the umbilical cord uh, gives off a bunch of vessels that run along the top of the placenta and these are fetal vessels so there's fetal blood inside the umbilical cord that runs out is in these vessels and those vessels dive down into the cotyledons into the uh, into the placenta if you look at it in cross section kind of like this there will be a fetal vessel running along the top and it dives down in comes back out this isn't the best deal the best picture but it's in these little structures and then there's diffusion of you know oxygen and nutrients across the membrane because the mother's blood is filling the placenta baby's blood is filling these vessels so the point is there's fetal blood the the fetus's blood is inside these vessels so um, let's take a look at a couple of scenarios here um, you've got a, sort of a sagittal view of the uterus the placenta, I'm sorry, with the cervix here, and let's say you've got a placenta 
with a, uh, let's say you have a, a succinctuariate lobe, and there's one portion of the succinctuariate lobe here, I mean, so you have one portion of the placenta here, and the succinctuariate lobe is there. And you've got the cord, we'll just have it coming in over here, and there's a blood vessel that's going along like this. And that blood vessel can run along, go right over the cervix, and come up over here and do its thing in this portion of the placenta. If we were to look at that from above, kind of like the other picture we did, you're going to have something like this. And vessels coming out, and then this one kind of running over here to run along this one. So in this case, you've got one of these fetal vessels running right over the cervical stroma, this internal cervical os. So in that case, yeah, you've got, an, you've got a problem. Um, what's another scenario? I'll do my beautiful picture of the cervix again. And here's our placenta. And let's say you've got a complete previa. And we've got our cord coming in. And we've got this vessel that's just a standard vessel running along the placenta in the placental membrane. Well, as many of you, I'm sure, know that these placentas can regress over time. And some people believe that they actually regress. Some people think that they, where it's inserted on the cervical stroma, that just involutes. But if that placenta involutes back, and now it kind of looks maybe like this, but the membrane is still there, and in that membrane was this vessel. So now that vessel is still running across the cervix. So now you've got um, the same scenario where there's a fetal blood vessel with fetal blood overlying the cervix, and these are vasa previa. So hopefully that um, cleared this up a little bit. Um, and thanks for watching. If you want to sign up for the website, there's a sign up link below as well. It's actually not signing up for the website, it's signing up for when we do go live and none of the links up above are live, just to let you know.